Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another webinar in the Big Run Recovery Zone uh, webinar series. So um, we're very excited today. We're joined by Jake Robertson, all the way from Kenya. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that the connection stays good. Um, if you are watching this live, if I could just ask if you could turn off your cameras and your mics just now, but if you've got any questions at all, just pop those in the chat and we'll try to get to them at the end. Otherwise, this session is recorded. It will be available on the Rig Run Recovery Zone website um, for you to view later. So Jake, Jake is an extremely well accomplished long distance runner and he's competed in a very high standard in some of the world's biggest competitions. He's, he's here today to talk about his journey and I guess I mean not just physical journey and sort of traveling from or moving from one place to another, but also a journey in the sense of overcoming obstacles to to become where he's he's ended up in today as a, as a successful athlete so i will pass over to to jake and he's going to speak to you today thank you hi everybody uh yeah as uh as shauna said i'm a very successful uh long distance athlete so, um Success, I guess, is based on uh, who uh, who is speaking about it, and um, I feel that I have had success, but I don't feel that I have uh, had all the success that I wanted. In my mind, when I was 17 and I moved out to Kenya, I thought by now I would be an Olympic uh, champion, and I haven't achieved that. But I'll start with a great quote, I believe in, and... Uh, it goes like this, that uh, you shoot for the moon and when you fall on the stars, you're still somewhere good. And even though I'm uh, somewhere in the stars right now, I have not stopped shooting for the moon. So, yeah, that's uh, in a way to speak about, uh, you know, a continuous, a continuous effort to get to where you want to be. And... You know, all these things like motivation and uh, discipline are all involved, but it's a long journey and there's there's never any correct right or wrong path. And it's a constant learning curve. You know, there's a lot of up and downs in life. And uh, even though you're mainly focused on your number one, there is a lot of uh, things that can get in between that. And how you uh, overcome these challenges to to really focus on your number one again is um, it's sometimes very hard, but uh, in a lot of cases, your number one will make you more positive towards everything else in life. So now I can uh, share some of my experiences. I was 17 when I moved to Kenya and uh, it was uh, very difficult, even though I was with my uh, twin brother, it was a, you know, culture shock. It was uh, far from my family and safety. We didn't have very much money to survive on. We did have some friends out here, a couple of world record holders and champions uh, that were also here to help us when we needed. But it didn't stop, uh, it didn't stop us from having challenges. We needed to learn and uh, see what worked for us. I overcome the mentality of a, a whole new culture, lifestyle change, you know, um, blackouts. We overcame election violence. We were through, um, <clears throat> we came through some hardships like that. Uh, even though the election violence was not based towards foreigners, it was still a very hard time. Completely uh, uh, no power for, I think it was two weeks food had run out in our little village and travel had become impossible because of uh, the violence around uh, further towards the cities and uh, yeah we our house was running out of food we had to ration that I had to tell our parents that the phone was turning off and they wouldn't have contact with us for some time and uh, yeah just training continued and the hope that uh, 
one day we would get to where we wanted to be. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's, uh, I guess, training kept hope alive. And hope is most important in, in anything. If you lose hope, then uh, you, you, you basically you lose your pathway. You know, so no matter where you are, yeah, you got to have uh, whatever challenges you got to go through. You got to hope for hope for a better day. If you're having a bad day, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. You know, I was a, I was a young, young guy dreaming pretty hard, and you know, uh, got my first opportunities in Europe, and I was not uh, so successful. The years went on, and uh, you know, I had a lot of people speaking bad about where I was at and whether I would ever make it, and. Uh, you know, I would I would just see small positive uh, positive <clears throat> improvements in my training. So that would encourage me. So whatever you're aiming for, as long as you can see your pathway and see improvements, uh, as small as they are, as the smallest gains that there are, then uh, you should remain positive. People are, are going to speak negative. That's just human nature and. Um, just have to kind of overcome that, avoid it if possible. And uh, yeah, take those po little positive gains and encourage yourself with the positive people around you. And uh, yeah, I hear a lot of uh, the rig run uh, athletes or um, runners, fitness enthusiasts, um, any of you in any way, um, uh, looking to achieve your goals, so yeah, it's uh, I'm gonna say it's you know it's it's gonna be challenging and uh, it's gonna be never ending because I'm sure once you get to your goals, you uh, achieve your goals, you're gonna have a new one, and again, that's human nature. So how we uh, deal with that, never being satisfied. We can uh, celebrate the achievements for what they are, but uh, to never be satisfied is not always a bad thing. So now I'm a, I'm a father of one. I have won some pretty big races around the world in America or in Lisbon, Portugal. I've been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really traveled. Um, I'm really experienced in all cultures around the world. and. Uh, I've had a I've had a real adventure in my life, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not satisfied. I'm always hungry and uh, still hunting bigger goals. Probably uh, Olympics next year and Commonwealth Games post that. You know, faster times and uh, also now my new goals include uh, providing for my family in a better way, trying to be the best father I can be. And uh, yeah, I mean, it goes like that. Life is like that. So, uh, you know, the days you wake up with no no motivation, think about discipline instead, because I have those days. I live in a world of pain. I'll get back from a hard training, and uh, the the pain I felt on that training doesn't doesn't end as I finish the training. I take it home with me. I walk around the house in pain. Sometimes I can't sleep that night because the the body has worked too hard. The adrenaline is still up, and um, that's a normal thing for us athletes. And the next day, when you wake up with uh, minimal sleep, you're still in that pain from the day before, you know, and. And the easy days, you know, you do lack the motivation. For, for us, anyway, we lack the motivation. So we turn to discipline and force ourselves out the door. The first step is always the hardest one. So whether it is uh, getting into the office or work or, you know, whatever it is, it's always the first step. Discipline yourself. Uh, 
Uh, what can help with discipline is having a good routine, trying to go to bed on the same time, trying to wake up at the same time every day, same breakfast, um, whatever gets you in uh, the mood in the morning to do what you need to do during the day. Because as soon as you start, I guarantee you're going to feel a lot better. You know, uh, it was like me today. I, <laughs> getting my first step out the door was difficult, but uh, once, I, once I was out, I made it happen and I had a great workout. So, And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope I'm sparking some uh, interesting questions because uh, yeah, I'd like to answer as many as possible. Uh, Shauna, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Thanks, Jake. Um, yeah, no, it's really inspiring. Um, I love the quotes. It, tell me if I've got this right. You shoot for the moon, and when you fall on the stars, you're still somewhere good. Is, am I, is that along the right lines? That's exactly it. That's exactly <laughs> yeah, that's it. great. I love it. I love it. Um, no, it's super, super encouraging. Um, you're trying to encourage everyone to stay positive and to work kind of consistently towards their goals. And I like what you said about how discipline and routine can really help when motivation levels are low. I think that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, we do we do have one question here, which is I think we've we've probably got a few people joining the call who are um, quite active people that maybe do a bit bit of running and some other sports. So. Someone here is asking about your stretching routine. Okay. What kind of stretching do you do and how does that fit into your um, your kind of program? Okay, so I always stretch after most easy runs and um, I do dynamic stretching or drills uh, before um, hard, hard workouts as part of my warm up routine. However, did you, sorry, I, did, did you just explain what you mean by dynamic stretching for, for those okay. who aren't familiar? So static, static stretching is a, a stretch that is held in one position. Dynamic stretching is almost like a bouncing or some form of movement while stretching. So those uh, actually can cause some good tension and uh, warm up the body as well. Uh, static stretching can cause muscles to be more flexible and uh, almost less reactant. So uh, static stretching is better after training, but I wouldn't recommend it after hard training just because, uh, or hard workouts, just because you're already that tired. And you should let the, the training absorb into your, into your body. But yeah, to continue on about stretching, I had uh, a pretty bad injury that knocked me out for two years of competing. And everybody, every physio I saw around the world kept treating me for a calf issue. Yet the problem was a sciatic nerve issue coming from my back. And a sports professor in the UK told me that I had to do a know a pre a prehab program and stretch every day in the morning before I go for my run for the rest of my life and you know that that was pretty hard for me because I was like I already train hard enough but since I started that prehab program uh, the sciatic nerve pain has settled and never came back to the same severity that it was at yeah, that's interesting. And it's something I hear from a lot of people that sort of early on in their athletic career, they um, have a kind of wrong diagnosis and, and spend many years being frustrated that, that things aren't resolving. And then at some point they go and see a, maybe a different type of practitioner or another practitioner and get told something completely different. And it's kind of like, unlocking a door you've you finally find the key to to resolving your issue yes and it's a it's a very hard uh it's a very 
that uh, you know to go two years without competing, but to continuously believe that you will compete again. And as I was talking about earlier, seeing small improvements, even if it's in training or somewhere that nobody can see. And, uh, you know, you gain positivity out of that routine. Um, it was so important for me to overcome that challenge over two years. Yeah, it must yeah. be super frustrating. I have, an, I have another question here um, from Stephen. So he says uh, he's completed a, a few marathons and half marathons, and he sees and hears a lot about carb loading up to before the event and he sees a lot of people using energy gels during the event and he's not um he's not tried that technique yet while he's training and he wondered if you think those are important um strategies while you're um while you're competing and exercising uh sports science i definitely believe in um i have you know, since becoming a marathoner, I have actually practiced a lot um, of, you know, hydration techniques during uh, competition. And the only way to practice is doing it in training. So, yeah, specifically, I use Morton, um, one of the bigger known uh, well, hydration uh, companies available. And, you know, since I've been using them, I tried a few different techniques and how much to hydrate, but I can recommend that you should try it out in training. If you want, try a different um, couple of brands, but definitely try it in training. And uh, yes, sports science, especially nutrition, helps a lot. It helps a lot with uh, not only the, the races or the training itself, but with general health. So not, not just... Uh not just the actual physical performance side of things, but you kind of feel you need to train in terms of your hydration strategies, your nutrition strategies. It's kind of all part of a bigger package. Yes. And to give it to you exactly as a sports professor gave it to me back in those years I was working with him, he said, even though you might not feel like a drink yet, or, you know, your glycogen stores might be running low. And if they deplete uh, to a certain level, there's no replacing them after that. By the time you're thirsty, you have already depleted beyond repair and uh, you'll have to go the rest of the race in that current state. And that's what they call hitting the wall, isn't it? Well, you don't need to hit the wall, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be at a, at a different level already and uh, it's hard to recover from there. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, one more, one more question then before we go. Um, and this is from Matt, and he says he he's not a runner at all, but he does a lot of walking and cycling, and he liked to do some running to help with his overall fitness. And do you have any tips for someone who's maybe just starting out who wants to try and break that thought process that they're maybe not built for running? Oh, for sure. Uh, keep it keep it fun and exciting. Make it uh, interesting, something, you know, uh, you don't just need to run. You can go out the door, do fartleks or, or small intervals. You can go and do some uh, hill intervals, run up the hill, jog back down. You can run two minutes at threshold or medium pace, one minute easy, um, do that, you know, repeat it 10 times. Something just to make it fun, mixed with a easy day in between or a, a ride the next day, yeah. So you don't need, you don't need to, to start running by going out there and trying to do a 10K, but? Um, not, not exactly. And uh, if, if your goal is to run a 10K uh, race or something like that, then actually doing the interval training will actually help quite a bit more than just going out there and grinding daily, running, jogging, you know, um, getting the speed or the change of pace from these short, exciting sessions uh, 
actually help quite a lot more. You save your legs as well from all the impacts. Yeah. You know? but yeah we have a... Actually, yeah. We have, a, have a, a great program available here that's kind of run through the NHS called Couch to 5K, something that I always recommend to, to nice. beginners who want to get started. And it's basically based on what you've talked about. So a little bit of walking, a little bit of gentle jogging, a little bit of running, and then just kind of gradually building that up over, over a few weeks and months to to get up to stage where people are able to run continuously. So that's always um, that's always a, a great one for people who are kind of just starting out. Um, Absolutely. I, I've got a, a, another question yeah. here from Paul and he says, um, is most of your marathon training runs at zone two? And I'm guessing you might know what that means because I don't. <laughs> Do you believe in this method? Question mark. Long and slow over fast paced. You know, uh, I learned one thing being out here in Kenya, and that is, um, and that's the side of sports science that we find uh, more difficult. We will look at it for interest. I guess zone two is a heart rate zone. And we don't use heart rate monitors. We have the wrist heart rates on our watches, but they're not always as specific. But uh, we try to keep it below max. We definitely don't hit race pace for most, most of our longer runs. We do, however, try to keep it in a comfort zone that we feel is still training. Um, some of these younger athletes still max out, and that's why they'll drop out earlier in the trainings. Um, they're not at the same level, but we appreciate their help. <laughs> they have a lot, lot to learn, and uh, yeah, we uh, we go with a, a lot of our a lot of our groups go with the feeling of the day and try to encourage each other to get the best uh, training possible without. Uh, overdoing it there's a saying also out here that uh, you constantly want to add to your bag and not take away so the more you max out the more you take away you just want to cont continuously add something add something and then by that you're gaining and uh, you should have a lot saved in your tank for when you when your race day is yeah uh, that's really interesting. I like that. Do you do you ever train at altitude? Yeah. So here in Eton, is uh, the high point is two thousand four hundred meters. Wow. Which I'm not sure what that is in feet. But yeah, a lot of V10 around two three, uh, two thousand three hundred meters. I do travel to a forest nearby quite a lot. That is about two thousand five hundred, two thousand six hundred meters. Uh, yeah, so we train a lot at altitude. I think when we go for our long runs or faster sessions, we drop down to around 2,000, 2,200 meters. And uh, you do feel a little difference. You you feel like uh, you can run a little faster down there. So even though it's 200 meters difference, uh, it makes a difference. Yeah. I, I... It's not an option we really have here in Scotland, but it's it's interesting to hear, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, we got a lot of um, appreciation and thanks from the people on the call today. So thank you very much. I'm gonna wrap up now and say good luck with the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games. And of course, the other major challenge you have in your life, which is being a father to a nearly two year old. Yep. <laughs> um, but we, we wish you every success. Thank you very much for, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.